Okay, move on. The fun block, uh, <laughs> the fun story. I'm really obsessed with this just because I think it is so funny and it reveals like exactly what type of COVID misinformation is okay and what's not. So let's put this up there on the screen. Effectively, what, and let's keep it up there for a little bit, guys. What happened is, is that the New York Post wrote a story about how Howard Stern, who apparently is a massive germaphobe, left his bunker to dine with friends for the first time since 2020. <laughs> and that happened f a couple of days ago, which means that he was basically inside and isolated from people for over two years, Jesus. which is crazy. And Helene Olen, who is a Washington Post columnist, says, quote, at some point, we need to have a conversation about the people still too afraid to leave their homes because of COVID. I personally know of two such cases. This is not a healthy way to live. I don't possibly know how you could disagree with that. And yet, the Washington Post's Taylor Lorenz, uh, lead hallmark, hall, hall monitor, as you said, she replies, that from Glenn, quote, so. <laughs> what an absurd, insensitive thing to post. Thousands are dying per week. Millions are disabled. Here's the key part. We have zero effective drugs that prevent infection. Immunocompromised people don't deserve condescending comments about being too afraid of a virus that can kill or severely disable us. Again, she claims to be immunocompromised. I don't know if she is or not. Uh, a lot of people say things online. But <laughs> let's take uh, that with, with the, whatever the grain of salt that you must, and let's take and examine that claim. A, there is zero effective drug for immunocompromised people. Now, hold on a second. What you're saying there, then, is that not just vaccination, that uh, Paxlovid, all the therapeutics that we have at our disposal, all of the different drugs and research that have gone into mitigating COVID, preventing COVID infection, all of that, have not borne out whatsoever. And it's just completely untrue. Put this up there from Zanek Tufeki, who works over at the New York Times. She said in a very clear subtweet, quote, there seems to be a lot of misinformation going around that immunocompromised people don't benefit at all from vaccines or existing <laughs> COVID therapies. That is absolutely false and a very dangerous falsehood to spread. Such people might not even realize the many options that they have. First of all, we have a lot of data to show immunocompromised people generate antibodies after vaccination. They may need more in terms of booster dosages, et cetera. Two, they have shown that there's a specific drug that has already been available for more than a year called Evusheld, which has been repeatedly shown to bring many immunocompromised people back to non-immunocompromised person levels for six months or more at a time. Hmm. even when adjusted to variants. In addition, monoclonal antibodies, if they were to be infected, and of course, Paxlovid, if they're also infected in order to mitigate the disease. The point being that, guess what? Even if you're immunocompromised, you might have to take it more seriously and you might have to have a frontline treatment uh, Im more immediately than if you or I were to get COVID, mm -hmm. but you can still exist in society as before. Um, I mean, Effectively, your risk of contracting COVID is basically the same as if you can you get any virus whenever you are immunocompromised. Yes, is it more of a risk than ever uh, or than most of the general population? Sure, but that doesn't mean that you should be living as some like strange hermit who doesn't leave their house for two and a half years, especially a guy like, look, people are free uh, to I, do what they want. Yeah, I mean, that's what I was gonna say. Is, yeah. Listen, if you're Howard Stern right. and yeah, you be my live guest. in your like mansion for right. by yourself for two, okay. Okay, fine. Weird, do whatever you, okay. you do. You that's fine. If yeah. your tailor runs and you make the so right. same choice, okay, that's fine. But don't like try to persuade other people that exactly. this is what they should be doing. <laughs> um, I'm actually glad she tweeted it though because I didn't know some of this information about how effective some of these treatments are for immunocompromised people. And I think it's important also in terms of you know there is this small faction that is still very committed to like mm -hmm. we should still be in lockdown and we should still be like banning indoor dining and things of that nature. And immunocompromised people is kind of like the, the trump card yeah, that they, they pull out. Like, well, what about these people? And right. so I think it is important to know that there are in fact effective therapeutics that, of course, you know, we want to be, like, considerate of everyone and make sure we're, like, taking everybody's health concerns seriously. But um, it's sometimes portrayed like an instant death sentence mm -hmm. for people who are immunocompromised, and that's, clearly, not that's clearly not scientifically or factually based, so.
important to know that. Yeah, there are a lot of drugs that are available. Also, a lot of lifestyle intervention that's available. A lot of immunocompromised people could just lose a less, lose some weight, and they would be much better. Most people could be better off if they were losing some weight. Uh, there's many different things that we, if you want to have the discussion, uh, we certainly can. But at a societal level, we long accepted that there are viruses, the flu virus, etc. Not, I mean, so many different norovirus, um, any of these things we've, that can be spreading. We've gotten every one of those viruses in my household this yeah, year. Geez. Yeah, I know. I, Crystal's got small children, which apparently are like suck. I do. I, like, oh my god! I do think it's a thing. Like petri that like, dishes. Oh, yeah. it's disgusting. I think, especially my youngest is in <laughs> kindergarten this year, right. and I do think it's there's something with like this the first year with everyone's like fully unmasked, and so they are getting every single. Wow. I, it's hard to even distinguish right. between from one virus to the next of everything that they've had. But yeah. anyway. We're all good. Yeah. Everybody this week is healthy, so it's good. And actually, in the long run, probably better, right? For immune good for system. the immune system. You get the antibodies. That's what I'm told. All that going. I think a lot of my <laughs> early travel to Asia as a child, I've got an iron stomach as a result. Of I'm that. sure. So, it, I bet that know? does have a lot to do. It's got to have something. You, yeah. You can't deny it. Anyway, the point is, is that <laughs> this is a perfect view into the hypocrisy of the type of COVID misinformation which you are yes. allowed to spread, she which was not doesn't banned. get called into question. She it didn't right. even get the little flag no on flag, it. No flag. No nothing. Yeah. Uh, other than and the utter ridicule of her colleagues and the general eye rolls <laughs> of the public. She well, that's why we're used to, to that by now. Oh, yeah, she probably is. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.